Edward, thank you. Now, if you've watched this program for a while, you know that I'm not really a fan of the government trying to swoop in and rescue us from any of our problems that we have created. I think we need to take our licks. I think these companies screwed up. They need to feel the pain come out stronger on the other side. But the real story is that plenty of smart and very influential people disagree with that theory. And now you can add another one to the list. It's the new Franchi Frenchman who heads up the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. He gave a shocking speech over the weekend in which he warned countries around the world that lowering interest rates will not be enough to, quote, get us out of the turmoil we are in, end quote. That, by the way, is kind of big news because it shows real fear over the dark clouds that may be ahead. Clouds that are so far above the horizon that they can only be seen by someone at a global level. He goes on to recommend, and this is what made blood shoot out of my eyes. He said the foreign governments need to start spending more and running up deficits. What? He says that countries should follow our lead and use big government welfare stimulus packages as a model for what the rest of the world should do. <laughs> I have to tell you, I know I'm just a rodeo clown who doesn't know anything really about international finance, but when a patient gets sick, you isolate them at work to cure the disease. Rarely, if ever, does a doctor say, hey, let's get every patient in the hospital this disease. You don't cure a disease by giving the disease to everybody else. But who am I kidding? I mean, if people actually used simple logic and common sense, then we'd never be in the position that we're in to begin with. Peter Schiff is the president of Europe Civic Capital and author of Crash Proof, How to Profit from the Coming Economic Collapse. Always a happy title and always good to have you on the program, Peter. Um, last night I'm in bed and I'm, you know, doing what I usually do in bed. My <laughs> wife is snoring and I'm reading, you know, about the coming economic apocalypse. And I, I read, hope, no doubt. And I read, I read this uh, bulletin from the IMF and it took me like four times to read it because I couldn't believe that their advice was to infect the rest of the world with our disease. Yeah, you know, it's like, you know, you know, a lot of teachers grade on a curve. So they have one student, the American kid in the class, who's smoking dope, cutting class, he's not studying, so he's flunking out. And rather than talking to that student to improve his study habits, he's encouraging the rest of the class to smoke dope and, and skip class so the whole curve can go down and then everybody can get a passing grade. But it doesn't, I mean, honestly, I mean, I hate to sound like, you know, like these conspiracy theorists that say the bankers are all in it together. But it's so stupid, it's almost like they are intentionally designing yeah. a collapse. You know, especially coming from the IMF, because for years these guys have been warning about the big imbalances, the current account and trade deficit in the United States. They've been warning about the consequences. Well, here they are. And instead of saying suck it up and do the right thing, they're trying to put more band-aids on it. They're trying to encourage the Europeans to be irresponsible, to take the pressure off our currency and our economy. But, you know, I don't think it's going to happen. I, you look at the ECB, they're talking tough. They're talking about inflation. They're not going to let European governments start deficit spending because they will rein them in. They will raise interest rates and they it, will undercut it. True or false, Peter, that this is, um, I read someplace last night that these guys, this was a real sign of how much trouble they think we're really in. Well, they know because they've been warning about it. Again, you know, we've got to suck it up. America has to suffer through this recession. We can't look for ways to postpone it like we did before. That's how come we got the housing bubble, because we didn't want to face the music four years ago. Last night, Peter, on 60 Minutes, um, they were talking about, you know, oh, look at this. What a surprise. Look how bad it is. This is something we've been talking about in this program for a long time. You've been talking it, uh, talking about this particular scenario for three years now. So sure. let me ask you what's coming in the next three years. What's going to look like years? Well, you know, our whole phony economy, which is based on borrowing money from the rest of the world to consume, is going to come falling apart. You know, American consumers acted as if they won the lottery if they owned a home. They were borrowing and spending trillions of dollars because they believed that this home equity was real. Well, now they're waking up to the fact that it was an illusion. The only thing that's real is the mortgages that they have, and now they're walking away from them. You know, that 60 Minutes reporter was surprised that somebody didn't want to pay $3,200 a month for a 1,200-square-foot townhome, <laughs> and, and they said, well, why? You, you, you signed up for it. And they said, sure, we were willing to do it when real estate prices were rising. Right. But now that they're falling, we don't want any part of it. We're walking away. Peter